Go ahead and grab your songbooks, your red songbooks, if you would. Page 376. Page 376. If you're able to stand, stand with me. 376. One day. One day. Good morning, church. 376. Great to see you here this morning. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt amongst men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved me. Buried He carried my sins far away. Rising He justified freely forever. One day He's coming, oh glory. Day. One day they left him alone in the garden. One day he rested from suffering free. Then angels came down o'er his tomb to keep vigil. Hope of the hopeless, my Savior is he. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. And then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. Oh, wonderful day, my beloved one's bringing. Glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. It doesn't look like a hard song, um, and you'd know it. Maybe, if we can, and I know Becky loves it when I just throw last minute things at her, but page, uh, not right now, but maybe in a bit, or maybe tonight, 214. I want you to take a look at that. All right. Father, we thank you for the time together this morning, 
And again, it could be the last opportunity we have to meet together. And what a wonderful, wonderful day. One day, the skies with his glories will shine. And uh, Lord, we look forward to that moment when the trump of God sounds. It cannot be much longer. I don't see how it could continue on and, uh, and uh, the way it's been. So, uh, Lord, you've been gracious to us. I pray for uh, the services today. I pray for the people uh, both here and listening online. And, and uh, Lord, that you would bring a revival to our hearts. Lord, I pray for our nation and the desperate straits that she's in. And, uh, Lord, I don't know that it's any worse than other times of great turmoil in our nation. We've had oh, probably half a dozen of epochs of time that, that were in such fashion. But we're just more aware of it now with everything going on. And, and Lord, but I also know that you broke down the middle wall of partition between the Jews and the Gentiles. And if you can bring two opposing sides together, then you can do it again. And uh, Lord, I pray that that would be the case and uh, that without you, there is no hope for peace. And so Lord, I pray that the Prince of Peace, Jehovah Shalom, would have a, a prominent place once again in this great nation. By the bless this morning's service, in Jesus' name, yeah, man, go around and say hey to one another, will you? Remember that. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. Go ahead and find your way back. 254. 254. 254. 254. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Yeah. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, sing that fourth verse again. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace, <coughs> him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. 
Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. Good singing this morning. All right, ushers, you can come forward. If you need a giving envelope or a bulletin, please raise your hand. And uh, thank you to all the guys who went paintballing yesterday. We had a great time of fellowship. Some of us are hurting this morning, but we had fun. And Pastor said he's going next time. And um, <laughs> the president, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> oh, we played a terrible game called Protect the President, and I was the president. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was JFK. So, <laughs> put it that way. All right. Um, Ottawa County Patriots meeting on Tuesday here at the church at 6 o'clock. And that's going to be a gubernatorial forum. Um, so if you can come, you'll want to be here for that. Uh, ministry opportunities. If you'd like to help make breakfast for the monthly prayer breakfast meeting, please see me about that. We've got three different families that are... Um, involved in that right now, but if we get a few more, that'll kind of sp uh, spread that out. So, uh, soul winning class, pastor is going to begin teaching a Sunday school class on soul winning in August, and if you're interested in that, you can sign up by the media booth. Is there any cost for materials or anything like that? Eleven dollars. Okay, so it'll be something like eleven dollars. We'll figure that out and and let you know. But if you'd like, if you're interested, you can sign up by the media booth back there. Again, that'll begin in August. A uh, reminder, quick reminder, please be sure to help your smaller children in the restrooms. This will be greatly appreciated by our cleaning crew. And uh, if you haven't thanked the people who clean lately, you'll want to do that. There's quite a few, quite a few people that help clean the church, and uh, we really appreciate that because it looks like a tornado in here after uh, Sunday, which we're thankful for, but we appreciate them cleaning. So uh, July 17th. Gubernatorial candidate Ralph Rebant will be here speaking during the Sunday school hour for grades fourth through adult. And we'll also have missionary David Owens to Argentina. He'll be with us all day uh, that day, so that's coming up. Uh, July 31st, missionary Dominic Burkhard will be with us, and he is with Capital Connections, so we'll learn what that's about. Um, and that also begins our revival with Brother Hamblin, July, or I'm sorry, no, it begins uh, July 24 to 27. So that is uh, coming up, not next Sunday, but the next. So we had the date change on that. Uh, teen Choir is at 5 o'clock today here in the auditorium. So if you're a part of that, please be here at 5 o'clock. You can come forward, ushers. Uh, Matt Meyer, you have treasury duty this morning. Brother Josh Hunter will be at Riley's Grove in Zealand at 2.30, and Brother Maybe at Lakeshore at American House at 3 o'clock. So those are the two nursing home services. Anything else that needs to be announced? All right, we pray for the offering, please, Brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. And Father, we ask you now that you bless the offering. Please bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Let's turn to page 354. Sing that song with Becky, 354. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Bearing shame and scoffing rude in my place condemned he stood sealed my pardon with his blood hallelujah what a savior guilty vile and helpless we spotless lamb of god was he full atonement can it be hallelujah what a savior lifted up was he to die it is finished was his cry and now in him exalted high hallelujah what a savior when he comes our glorious king all his ransom home to bring then a new this song will sing hallelujah what a savior morning everyone if you'll stand with me we'll be in the book of ruth this morning ruth chapter two Ruth chapter 2, and we'll be reading verses 13 and 14. Ruth chapter 2, 13 and 14. And when you're there, we'll go ahead and we'll read both verses together. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, Ruth chapter 2, verses 13 and 14 all together. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord. For that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed and left. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you that we can be here. Father, I thank you for the privilege that we can meet together and that we can hear the preaching of your word, that we can fellowship together and that we can worship you. Father, I ask that you would give us a, an extra attentiveness to the message today. Be with pastor as he preaches. And Father, I pray that you would bless those that are here and that those that are joining us online as well. Uh, thank you again for sending Jesus to die for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. If I'm being honest, I'm tired from this journey. If I'm being honest, I've wanted to give up The battle's getting stronger Can't hold on much longer If I'm being honest I've had enough But Thou, O oh Lord Art a shield for me My glory of my head you've heard 
my crime. You saved my life, so I will give to you my every breath. If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I don't deserve you. If I'm being honest, my soul should be in hell. You'll never forsake me, no matter what breaks me. If I'm being honest, you have never failed. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. You've heard my cry, you've saved my life, so I will give to you my every breath if I'm being honest. The truth is I'm unworthy of your love and mercy, but you just keep on pouring out your blessings. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. You've heard my cry you saved my life so I will give to you my every breath if I'm being honest if I'm being If I'm being honest, I'm tired from this journey. If I'm being honest, I've wanted to give up. The battle's getting stronger, can't hold on much longer. If I'm being honest, I've had enough. But Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. You've heard my cry, you saved my life, so I will give to you my every breath if I'm being honest. If I'm being honest Noah Jacob Thomas in here Here, come here bud All right young man God is doing a work in him and it's exciting to watch him in his growth for the Lord all right let him know all right. Yes, this is baptism certificate Meliana where's Meliana where are you come here there young lady all right right here it's your baptism certificate my dear God bless you Amen. Jamar Tayshawn where'd Jamar go come here Jamar Got that fancy new haircut, man, looking good. All right. Love you, buddy. God bless you, man. All right. JR, where's JR? Hector. There you go. <laughs> my new name for you, my brother. <laughs> Love you, man. Haley, 
Or Haley, come here, my sweet. God bless you, my dear. <laughs> Dovey Adeline, is Dovey in here? Dovey, come here, Dovey Adeline. Yeah. All right. Love you, sis. God bless you, buddy. Product of dedicated folks working with our teenagers. And uh, the blessing of that is beyond measure. I have no idea, you know, what that's going to yield in the years to come because there are folks dedicated with a heart for our young people. And they're not just filling a slot. They love them. And they've invested their life in them. And uh, few things are as, as profitable as finding something more important than yourself. And uh, the joy of that. Hey, where's uh, Jenny? Jenny Nash? Where are you, Jenny? All right. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You a Highlander. You, for, you here from here originally, Jenny? Ever born and raised? All right. You a Dutch girl? Okay. <laughs> Good to have you, honey. I appreciate you coming. All right. Penny? Penny in there? Penny? Let me see. Zealander. So you're a foreigner then over here. Is that right? You get your passport to get into Holland from that? Where are you from originally? Did you? Oh, what about that? What part of New York? Uh, where, you know where Johnson City is? Uh, no. He's from Johnsonville. Johnsonville. He's from Johnsonville, which is over toward uh, Buffalo. The other side of the Hudson. Albany area. Are you near Albany? Anywhere? No. You're in the godly part of New York because <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Great Lakes region, yeah, bless your heart. We gotta keep an eye on Ridge, his wife's been gone for a few weeks, he's starting to forget how to act in public, <laughs> man. All right, how about Paul and Christina? Where are you, Paul and Christina? Are you in here, Paul and Christina? Oh, over here, good to have you folks, hey, amen. And Hollanders, all right, Hollanders, where are you from originally? You born and raised in Holland? Where are you from? Laos? Oh. Laos? Oh. <laughs> My daughter-in-law is from Laos. Yeah, that, that pretty little girl right there. No. <laughs> that was last week's message that we, we dealt with that. Yeah, she ain't much on picking husbands, but she's a sweet kid, man. And, uh, good to have you folks. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, if you drove from Laos, you get the prize for the furthest <laughs> coming. Anybody know what they call a lunch room in the military? A mess hall or a chow hall? You look at 13. He says, uh, then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my, my Lord, for... Thou hast comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaids. And Boaz said to her, At mealtime, come thou thither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, so now they're in the chow hall, and she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat and was sufficed and left. Again, look at that. She did eat and was sufficed and left. And I'm not going to get into this right now, but I just want to give you a little lead into the next in the series. Verse 15 says, And when she was risen up to glean, she'd spent that time with him, a time of respite, but then there was a time to work, a time to get back at it once again. And I want to, tonight, today's message primarily is for believers. 
So I've done that before, and then God takes it and twists it, works it in the heart of a lost person, and then they realize their need for a Savior. And, you know, I, I, I can't remember. I, I preached one just an off-the-wall message about something, and somebody got saved in a message. I remember, how in the world did they ever get saved in that message? There wasn't anything in there about salvation. But God can make something out of nothing. And he, he knows exactly what we need uh, to get us along, to help us out, get us through. And uh, I want you uh, to be uh, in prayer for uh, one of our folks, in particular a dear friend of mine. And Jan has got some challenges health-wise, and I want you to pray for Jan Harrell. And she is a dear friend. A long time. They're old people, man. <laughs> oh, they've been around here forever. In fact... <laughs> Al's mother, Al's mother, when we started the church 25 years ago, Al's mother, who at that time, what do you suppose she was? Al, was she in her 80s yet? 19. And, uh, and she came to me wanting to start a bus route. And she was, she was advanced in age, and we didn't even have a van, let alone a bus. We just started the church. But that's kind of a heritage that he has and, uh, and she was faithful and soul winner and uh, had a heart for the ministry. And uh, they're just great folks. Speaking of people with a few sunsets on them, for whatever reason, I was talking to Rich this morning. He comes to my office on Sundays. And, and it got me thinking. I checked up on my, you ready? My kindergarten teacher. She's still living. My kindergarten teacher was born in 1920. Yeah. You put it together? Yeah. She'll be 102 this year. And she's still, go and still sharp. I stopped by and spent some time with her. She was 97 or 98. And uh, she told me all about my life, who I married. Oh, yeah. She knew more about my family than I knew about my family. And, uh, and when I came up, to greet her, she was out in the yard, all bent over in the flower garden, taking care of flowers. And I said, Mrs. Weekly. And yes, yeah, Mrs. Weekly, Bart Spencer. Oh, Bart, it is so good to see you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about it, man, what a blessing. 1920. Woo. Guys, we're in the ninth installment on this series on Ruth. It's going to take a bazillion of them to get through it because there's just so much, so much in this beautiful book. A book that stretches from problems and heartaches and widowhood and rejection and determination and a new life and a new purpose and a new family and, and a new future. And it's all, all so wonderfully compacted in these few short chapters of the book of Ruth. But I'm telling you, if you spend time in it and meditate on it, God opens up just a plethora of encouragement and beauty. And uh, uh, However, if you don't grab the typology, you miss a wonder of applications for the New Testament believer. And those of you who have been part of this series now from its inception will remember that Boaz is a type, a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that Ruth, as a Moabitess, a Gentile, is a picture of the New Testament believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have a beautiful picture. And then when you take that typology and you join that with the events that are transpiring, the application, while it may be varied, is also very evident. And that's what I want you to grab out of the passage that we're in today. That as long as you've come to Christ as your only hope for forgiveness... Your only hope. You're, you're not going to, to earn your way or work your way or merit your way 
to forgiveness. It is the grace of God that's presented His only begotten Son on your behalf. He died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. He, he, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was placed on Him. And, and that, that's essential that we understand that because if, if you're here trying to work your way to forgiveness, trying to merit God's favor, then you're going to miss the entirety of the blessing of the book of, of Ruth. And uh, Ruth had found her way from Moab. She had turned her back on Moloch and the uh, pagan heathen idol worshiping gods of her family. She left her religion and her relationships and then finds her way in a new country and with a new life among new people with a new purpose in her life. And uh, that's what happens. He, uh, that's when Paul used the word behold. He says, old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. I mean, how pervasive is the new life, the regeneration? It is pervasive in every aspect Amen. of your life. Uh, you would find that application in Isaiah 6, I believe it is. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And what did his train do? It filled the temple. Make application. Uh, your body is a temple of the Holy God. And so when, when, you, when God comes into your life, the Bible says his train filled the temple. It means his presence. There was no place in the temple where God was not. And, and so it is so pervasive in our life. When we come to Christ, there's no part of our life that goes untouched by the presence of God. And that's, that's what makes this life worth living. That's what makes it exciting. That's what gives it priority above everything else. Christ rules and reigns supreme on the altar of our heart. And that's so important to us. And, but Ruth makes her way to the field and Boaz takes notice before... Now think about it. Boaz took notice before Ruth noticed that Boaz was noticing. He already had taken notice of her. And he calls his foreman in, the Holy Ghost of God, and says, all right, who's that? And of course he says, that's that Moabitish girl from Moab. Emphasizes it. And as he sat there and was conversing, with, uh, as the foreman was conversing with the boss, Boaz. And he says, that's that Moabitish girl from Moab. You getting what I'm saying? But his boss had that look in his eye. And you can almost hear, you can easily imagine the tone of that foreman, like, oh, oh, boss, hold on, hold on. Look, pop, no, no, she's from Moab. She's on the other side of the tracks. Boss, you understand, Moab. She probably is a prostitute and does drugs and is a drunk and, and, and just, have, well, wait, Moab. She's not like one of your other maidens. It didn't face him in the least. It was like, blah, 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 Charlie Brown's teacher. Womp, 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 womp. Because he didn't care about her past. He cared about her. He cared about her. He cared about her. That's such an important thing that we need to remember. I was talking with, with John uh, this morning. He was talking about a young fella that God brought across his his, his path to try to be a help to and, and, uh, and, and that we're never too good. You remember my story about that when I said that guy will never fit in and, and then that preacher said, the moment that you think you're better than somebody else, you're of no value to God. 
when you think you're better than somebody else, uh, I think it was maybe uh, uh, Brandon and I were talking yesterday, maybe. I think that's who I was speaking with. <clears throat> and the fact that we always want to make sure there's a warm and welcoming spirit here because and that's why we keep it in front of you that none of us are any better than anybody else. We all came from the same cesspool of filth. Whether yours was a religious church going filth or whether it was the debauchery of, of a street life filth, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know? yeah. Whether your dead rats are in holy water or <laughs> Lake Makatawa, they're still dead rats. And those of you are visiting don't even have any idea what I just said. Following a morning of diligent work, remember Ruth, type of the New Testament believer? Following a morning of diligent work, it was time to head to the meal tent for a time of rest and recuperation before going out and finishing the, are we okay? Is everything okay? Messy, is everything all right? Okay, I saw your hubby go out too, and, and uh, if we need to, I, I do that. <laughs> I'll just digress for a moment. I was preaching a camp meeting over by Detroit many years ago, 20, over 20 years ago. And as soon as I get up, well, three guys preached before me. I was the last one of the day. And every time the guy got up, the sirens went off across the street, the fire department. It took off. I thought, well, three times, I'm good. No, I got to preach a guy falls out. About where Mimi is now, a guy falls out in the aisle. I mean, fell out. I thought, man, I got power with God. <laughs> and so I'm trying to preach. This guy's laying in the aisle, and people are all gathering around him. And I'm trying to preach because the preacher hadn't said, he can give me any sign of what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, is everything okay with that guy? That was right after I kneeled down to illustrate prayer and a guy about where Jason is jumps up, runs up to me, and hits my shoulder. Is that something they do in Michigan? Look at that. I'm, I was new here. No, I had a big old spider on my shoulder. Oh, yeah. There would have been two of us laying in the aisle if I'd have seen that. No, I saw a preacher, and all of a sudden the fire department goes off again. Four times. Four, and come up. And it was this time, it was here. He had, he had a heart malady, and he didn't die, and, but uh, interrupted the service. But fortunately, it was after the offering, so it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> you know what's going through my mind right now, John? I got visitors here. Those visitors are going, what in the world? <laughs> You're in good company. That's what the rest of these people are thinking, too. Yeah. Yeah. It'd been in the field working, and now it was time for a, a moment of respite. And God does that for us, that as we're busy in the field, he always provides a time for us to fall back and regroup, to borrow, borrow from my military days. By the way, I, I, I throw that in here because we're working with him and for him, and in doing so, he treats us very well which is a principle for business. There's an employer-employee relationship. It's not part of the message, but I threw it in here anyway. Because if an employer, employer's got to take good care of his employee. Because if he doesn't, he's going to lose two things. He's going to lose his employee, and he's going to lose his reputation. And the employee has to perform, right? That's why he got hired. Nobody owes you anything. That's right. yep. You get out and work. Amen. I got a friend of mine, I talked to him yesterday. A very accomplished, high-end flooring guy over in Detroit. And he says, man, I, can't. I said, how's business? He said, actually, business is great, but I, can, I can't get anybody to work. And I'm thinking, where are these people getting their money if they're not going to work? Where are they getting their money? 
Got to be. I mean, is there some kind of government program that gives money to stupid people? Is that, is that like a stupid program? Like, oh, you're lazy? Oh, all right, well, let's give you money. You're lazy. No, stop paying them. They'll get hungry, and they'll go to work. It's not nuclear science. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm just frustrated. But not mad. There's a difference. Like when that lady cut me off in traffic, that was mad. And then she gave me the Hawaiian peace symbol. She cut me off and gave me the Hawaiian peace symbol. I just wait better. With all of my... Like, all right, do everything you want to do. See, in New York, they get them. They're a little slower, but they get them. Ruth immediately goes to work when she arrives. She gives her life to, begins to follow Jehovah God. She immediately begins to go to work. And unfamiliar with how things work on the farm, I imagine she probably heard a dinner bell and she looks around and, and the reapers and the maidens are laying their baskets down and everybody's heading to the chow hall. That must be the way things work. That when there's a specific time of respite recuperation, it was a time they, they came out of the field and were refreshed. You can make application, I imagine, pretty quickly. If we were to typify the local church as the chow hall, that we've been out working for the Lord all week and we come together to get revived and recuperate and then go back out into the field. Ruth has done her job. Now doing her job, it was time to spend time together. And I wanna, I wanna uh, say as I, uh, I think I mentioned this the other night at the camp meeting, uh, that, that we cannot overestimate the value of fellowship it is so, so important. And at a time when we begin to, to struggle or become complacent or, or are taken captive by distractions in our life, we need to be able to get back in line with God. We need to get retuned with the Lord. And along, He brings a revival. Two weeks from today, we start a, a revival with Brother Hamlet. Or he'll bring along a mission conference to get us refocused on what's most important, the souls of mankind. Or he'll even bring along a paintball outing. Just time to spend together. Was there 29 guys there yesterday that, that for some reason got some sick joy out of shooting people? <laughs> Especially when they went down. And then it, 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 yeah, but it's a dude thing. I mean, it's a dude thing. Guys just like shooting things. You remember that? Girls like curling irons. Men like shooting irons. <laughs> Shoot her too, all right? It'll be our first woman president. Yeah, right there. <laughs> the whole design is to bring us a reset, to use a popular term. Yeah, exactly. These times are essential. There's only a few of us who grabbed a hold of that. These times are essential to our strength and prosperity as we serve the Lord. Again, Ruth's done her job. She's been occupied with the privilege of working in the master's field. And now she has been invited to join him at the table of revival. And here in the next few minutes, I will not keep you long. It's here that I want to focus. Verse 13, Ruth recognizes the source of her blessings. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, <clears throat> for thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid. I like that. Thou hast spoken friendly. He didn't even know her. 
but you don't have to know somebody to be friendly, right? Yeah. And you, you people that are a little, that, that, that are kind of introverted, you need to get out of that, right? Well, I don't know what to say. Just say anything to somebody. It'll start a conversation, good or bad. It'll start a conversation. <laughs> Just say something, man. It's okay. But we, we need that fellowship. It's so important. It's so important. It's significant that Boaz does not direct her gaze to himself. Remember what Jesus said? I came to do the will of the Father. I do all things that please Him. The whole purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ was to direct our gaze to the Father. And, and I think it's in verse 12. Verse 12, i got it open right here. I think it's 12. Yeah, the Lord recompense thy work. Yeah, that's it. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. Not of me, Boaz says, but the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. It's not me that's the source of your blessing. It's God that's the source of your blessing. She understood the source, and because of that, she directs her worship and gratitude. Again, it's not under Boaz's tutelage, but the Lord's wings she's come to trust. And again, the importance of keeping our gratitude and worship directed toward the right object. We men love to worship men. We do that. that you, you have a, I always mention you have a great revival break out and people are going to ask, who was the preacher? doesn't matter. Because God was at work. That's what's important, not who the man was that God worked through. Now, honor to whom honors do, but the blessings come from the Father when He chooses to rain down His blessings upon us. Sure, be thankful for the church and for the people, for the pastor, for the Bible, for the Holy Spirit of God, for your daily bread that He provides for you, but don't lose sight of the source. Thank God for those with talent, but remember the source of the talent. Thank God for those with the heart of compassion, but remember the source of the heart of compassion. As my preacher told me years ago, he said, when I was just getting into the ministry, in fact, I don't even think I went to Bible college yet, but I was heading that way. And he said, one thing about the ministry, he says, there are times when you get a lot of perfume thrown your way, just don't drink it. And I thought, yeah, that makes good sense. With her worship well grounded, Ruth is moved with gratitude toward Boaz. The whole focus of this message is to, to reset us to get our attentions in the right place. Our blessings, our deliverance has got to be refocused. Well, it's election year, and the election's not going to change anything if God doesn't change it. You know, as I was talking with the Lord a while ago, and that, that thought comes in my mind, that he tore down the middle wall of partition to opposing parties. We're America. We're not Republican and Democrat and Independent and Libertarian. We're America. We're America. So don't let the Marxist, the damnable and godly Marxism, destroy our nation. We're Americans. We come together. Whether we're from New York or Illinois or Dominican Republic or Laos or the Netherlands. Well, maybe not the Netherlands. Um, they aren't in here right now. Or Chile or Colombia. Either way. But we're together. We're, we need to be unified. And that will only happen when the Prince of Peace rules. Well, Boaz comforted Ruth. She realized the harvest she was enjoying would not have been possible, but for his protection and preparation. She worked because 
of God's goodness in her life. She wasn't trying to earn it, but she was enjoying it. And in those times when God visits the soul and reveals Himself, it's those times that we're brought to our lowest estimation of ourself and are given a greater admiration for God. We come to see ourselves the way we truly are. It's of note that in loving Ruth, Boaz exhorted her to go on working. He didn't take her out of the field, but he encouraged her and sent her back into it. God's love is not revealed again in a free ride, but in a privilege to serve. Well, I have to preach here, I have to preach there. And my pastor said, you don't have to preach anywhere, you get to. God's love is revealed in work. And if it is, then Satan's would be revealed in idleness. He always takes what God creates and he perverts it. And so God says, there's value in work. You got to get out and work. There's no value in video games. Value in work. Value in work. There's all different types of work. You don't have to get to work where you get blisters on your hands or callus. You might get blisters on your brain. It may be head work. But it's work. It's work. When the adage, and I don't mind as the devil's workshop is uttered, there's far more spiritual truth to that than we realize. Again, I mentioned Marxism. The goal of Marxism is that you never work. You're free when you don't have to do anything. God said just the opposite. He set us free to serve. Boaz spoke friendly to Ruth. It was the kind words of Boaz that assured her she was safe under his watchful eye. She really had no idea how blessed she was until she began spending time with Boaz. Boaz is a type of who? Christ. Ruth is a type of who? The New Testament believer. She really did not realize just how blessed she was until she started spending time with him. Prayer, meditation, Word of God, as he reveals himself. The Word of God, the voice of the Almighty, works a work in the heart of those who place their trust in him, and that then serves to motivate them to continue on his field, in his field. It's when the child of God ceases from spending time listening to the voice of God. When he ceases spending time in the Word of God, ceases spending time musing through this Holy Spirit of God, that soon other fields become enticing. When you start laying out a church, you're going to start going dry on the inside. And all of a sudden, other things are going to look more important to you. Revivals will come up and you'll think, well, man, I think I'm going to rent me an RV. I think I'll go camping. I think we'll go to the beach. Why? Because you haven't been spending time with Boaz. And other fields start looking more enticing. Remember when he told her, don't go in another field. You glean right here in my field. So don't get caught up in that. And you, he says, you need to be fast, hard by my maidens. You need to hang out with the other servants in my field. But Boaz spoke friendly to her. I wonder, have we not heard Boaz speak friendly to us? Some of the songs that were picked out this morning, the one that they'll be singing here for too long, he came to me. And uh, uh, last night I was going over the message again and that song came to mind. I started looking at the words of that song. And I said, man, that is so true. The gulf that separated me from Christ my Lord was so great. It's something I could not afford. You know. But when I couldn't come to him, 
He came to me. What did he, what's it say there that, that Boaz did? He reached her. I'll preach on that tonight. He reached her. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? You know, there are people in our church right now who just need to know that everything's going to be okay. I mean, we've got 16% inflation. The government tells you 8.3. Just double it, and you'll be in a better reality. Unemployment, they say, oh, unemployment's doing great. No, people stop looking for work. That's why. And now you've got much more folk coming in to the workplace. Work for it. The work demographic. And they're not going to work. Again, where are they getting their money? I don't get that. You guys figure that out. Let me know. I'd really like to know that. That I can preach on it too. I always go back to the reporter from Wood TV when she was interviewing me. How often do you preach politics from the pulpit? I said every service. Every service? How do you find something political in every service? I said, because there's a biblical answer to every societal ill. Very simple. Is the world screwed up? Yeah. So there's an answer how to get it right in the Word of God. It's like voting. I'm never going to tell you who to vote for. I just tell you who not to vote for. You can go. I'm, I'm kidding. Visitors, I'm kidding. Yeah. Somewhat. The comforting and kind nature of Boaz caused Ruth to once again consider her past. Again, we've got to keep close to Calvary. <clears throat> Never allowing the purpose of the cross to creep too far from our heart. Notice how Ruth frames her thankfulness. Look at the end of verse 13. I be not like one of thine handmaidens. You know, it's ingrained in us to try to compare ourselves among ourselves. Should it not be enough to realize all that God has done for us to assure us that we are special in His sight? He doesn't love one above another. Hey, you know, He loves all. I, I was listening the other day, and I, and I understand, the, I, I understand the, you know, the rewards coming in the eternal realm, and I understand that, but sometimes we word things differently, that... We say, man, God's got his favor on that guy or that girl. No. God's no respecter of persons. No respecter of persons. You may see more readily, or you may be impressed by the faithfulness of someone who's, who's lived a life that's maybe void of a lot of fluff and fanfare, but they've remained faithful. Okay. But God doesn't love that person. He doesn't love Adonai Judson. You know, more than he loves Doug Formsma. You know, uh, he doesn't love Charles Haddon Spurgeon more than he loves Isaac Meyer. He doesn't. Now, that's an incredible thing to us. And saying that we, we always try to compare ourselves among ourselves. And Ruth says, I'm not like one of your handmaidens. He said, I know. I love that about you, that you're not like anybody else. I love that about you. That's just something special to me. You don't understand what I've done. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you go back, he says, it had, he says to, to Boaz, says to Ruth, it's been told me all that you did. He knows all about you. He says, I love it that you're different than everybody else. You're a little hard-headed, but... That's just part of the Dutch culture. <laughs> but he said, I love that about you. Isn't it great that he makes us so unique and then he loves us so uniquely? Amen. To think that, that we just had five or six of our, our teenagers. And at one point, they came to that crisis moment of their life, just recently, and said, I need Christ as my Savior. I don't know that I'm worthy. I can help you with that. You're not. You're not. I remember when a friend of mine, 
I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to have a whole bunch to preach tonight. I remember a friend of mine called when we were talking. Some of you know him. His name is Jeff Stewart. Jeff is one of the most unique Christians I have ever met in my 37 years of being a child of God. And he calls me one time, and you never know what he's going to say. He's kind of like Lawrence Mendez when I was. Lawrence called, and we talked yesterday for quite a while. And they're a lot alike in that you never know what they're going to say. So Jeff calls, and he says, Hey, I was thinking of something, Brother Bart. I said, What's that? Who's more worthy, you or Jesus? Yeah, that was my response. Like, are you a heretic? Who's that? He says, well, yeah, just who's more worthy? I'm like, are you leading somewhere? I'm just asking you. I said, well, he is. No, it's not true. I said, what do you mean that's not true? You're not going to get into heaven. You keep talking like that. He said, no, no, no. He's not more worthy than you. He alone is worthy. It's pretty good. I mean, especially coming from him. He had to get it from somebody else. But that was pretty good. He alone is worthy. You know that, 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 that song, It Will Be Worth It All? It will be worth it all. Right? When what? When what? We see Jesus. I remember Bart Dame saying, a buddy of mine saying one time, will it be worth it all to Jesus when he sees you? It'll be worth it all to us, but we'll be worth it all to him. That's a good statement. It's a good observation. And I'm asking you now, is your life right now, were the rapture to occur, is your life in tune with the Lord? Will it be worth it all to him? What do you think about your life right now? Is it where it ought to be? The things you've done in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, seven days. Does it bespeak that Christ is worthy? He alone is worthy. Does it? Is it time to get reset? Revive, recuperate it. God's brought you into the chow hall. Sit down, relax a little bit. Get revived, get nourished, and then get back out. Are you getting reset today? Let's stay, stand together. I'm going to have a word of prayer. This is the time we call an invitation. It's time we give people the opportunity to respond. We call this platform, these steps, an altar. It's just a place where our lives are changed, where we deal with God. And if you choose to do it, you can do it right there where you're standing. Or you can kneel right there in the aisle by your chair, whatever works for you. But it's an invitation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a word of prayer. I ask everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes so you're not distracted by other people and that you can deal with the Lord. Father, I pray now for your watch care over us. Lord, as I consider the truth of this message, I was humbled and humiliated at the same time. Lord, when I think of all you are, and I don't really understand all you are, but when I compare that to what I am, and I, then I consider all you deserve, and I think of how little you get from me, God, I'm asking for your help. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You're here today, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you were to die today, you're not sure heaven would be your home, but you want it to be. I want you to raise your hand right now. Say, preacher, would you pray for me? All right. You're here today. You've been saved, but you've never been scripturally baptized. As the penis begins to play, I invite you to come. Many have already come. How about you? Come and deal with the Lord. Just spending time with Him. Review how you've lived your life. Review. Who's counting on you? If they're counting on you and they follow your path, where would it lead them? Every one of us have a sphere of influence. 
What is your influence? You came to church this morning for a reason. What are you leaving with? What are you taking with you out of those simple thoughts, out of Ruth chapter 2, verses 13, 14? What are you taking home with you that you didn't have before you came? Think about that. Review those statements, those portions of the message that caught your attention. Right now, review them and find out what finds lodging in your heart. What are you taking home with you that you didn't have when you came? It may be simply encouragement. That may be it. It may be a revived or a renewed or a refreshed or a reset. Focus on who God is. A revisiting of who you are. A penitent spirit for how you've invested the life God has given you. More times than not, that's what happens with me. I think of how wonderful and magnificent He is. I think of how slothful and inconsistent and easily distracted I am. Who's on your prayer heart right now? That heart of prayer that you have, who occupies it? For whom did you pray this morning when you rose up? What was your first thought before your feet hit the ground? What hit your heart? Are you a person of prayer? Those of you that are watching online, I appreciate that you're watching online, but if you don't have a local church, you've got to find one, a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching local church because people need encouraged, they need exhorted, and you can't do that sitting at home watching it on TV. Father in heaven, I want to tell you just, I, I want to, you know what, I, I thought about it, I, I didn't really mention it, Lord, in the message, but there she was in the midst of all those people. She sat beside the reapers, the handmaidens, the maidens rather, were there, and none of that crowd intimidated her in the least when it came to worshiping him, when it came to extolling the virtues of Boaz. She didn't care who was around. What needed to be said, needed said. You've comforted me. You've spoken kindly to me. And I'm not like one of your handmaidens. She wasn't ashamed to publicly 
praise Boaz. Lord, help us to be likewise, unashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Lord, thank you for these dear folk. I thank you for your word. Think of how it certainly affected and then infected my soul in preparation for the message. And I thank you that because of your word and your Holy Spirit, the exhortation of your people, the sweet fellowship, I leave out of here today a little stronger than I was when I came in. Refreshed and revived, I think of Ruth leaving out of that chow hall after having eaten a little something and re-energized and rested, revived. She's ready to get back to work. And Lord, I love you. Bless these dear folks. Thank you for our friends that have visited with us today. They could have went anywhere, but they were here. Bless them for that. Father, I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>